here we are. And this was the series that everyone said was going to happen. When they saw the bracket for the qualifier, they said it was going to come down to Hart and Tato. And some of the other groups did not play out as people expected. There's been a lot of upsets, but this one felt inevitable. And uh, Tato only lost one game, which was in his very first round, to the 96th seed, who went for Manaspa with the Georgians, which was wild. And then Hart hasn't lost a game yet. And I'm sure both players are going to drop some games here because they're so good. Uh, with me, I have Orlu. And Orlu, we, we've really got to be awake for this one because Mudflow starts off our series. It does indeed. And I got to say, I didn't really remember too much about this map from uh, the last Hidden Cup. But I've really been enjoying it in the qualifiers so far. It's one that actually plays with to an extended Feudal Age, which we don't really see that often in the current meta. Yeah. So it's nice that it's just so open but not to the point when you can't do anything. Like, it's not like you're completely impossible to get any economy going. So I I've really been enjoying this, and it's certainly a map that can feature demo ships. And yes, Tato, of course, is known for that unit. Yeah, that's true. Tato is like the guy with demo ships. And uh, I, I didn't actually cover his early rounds because I had to pick and choose. And he, yeah, I mean, he was just so expected to win. It didn't prioritize it. But I watched through some of the games, and I remember he had a crazy... All in feudal. He had 20 spears, 20 scouts, and like five demos lurking around the marshlands <laughs> uh, on one of his Mudflow games. But yeah, it's a fun map. Uh, we should see that Feudal Age aggression. And if we see that Feudal Age aggression, the Magyars could dominate here. Uh, cheap scouts, extra attack on the scouts, really strong. And that's why Hart has gone for the Magyars. Tata with a more defensive choice here has gone for the Byzantines, which is very rare for this map. I think it might be one of the first times I've seen it. So uh, what do you think about that one? Well, when I think about Mudflow, I, you know, you think about Chinese, of course, being insane because of the uh, the fish under your TC. But beyond that, usually it is something in the aggressive feudal age family of civilizations. And Magyars certainly qualify for that. Yeah. Lots of scouts. That persistent uh, discount on each and every scout means that you can play extended feudal age, no problem. We don't really see the hybrid-y sorts of civs that often, unless you're doing the uh, the awesome Persian strat of the, the dock right away. But... Yeah, uh, Byzantines. I mean, it's it's a Byzantines matchup, as I always say. Like, it's fine, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if you know it's going to be an extended scout war, then cheap spearmen is always going to be a good thing to have, right? Um, yep. And in some of my conversations with players, players were, in some cases, very comfortable if they had a camel civilization, actually. Now, that, of course, is Castle Age, and a lot of players struggle in Feudal Age here, but... Uh, Byzantines also have the cheap camels. So I think, yeah, you can do no wrong with the Byzantines, as we all know. Any map they can pretty much be strong on. So I don't mind it from Tato. I, I think this is also, like, if you think you're the better player, but you recognize that your opponent has a tendency to snowball fights and kill fast, and that is his greatest strength, which is maybe what Hart has, um, Byzantines may be one of your best picks to just try and slow that down. The one concern I have with Byzantines is that if we get into the extended feudal age we keep talking about, you don't have bloodlines for your scouts. Yep. So although the cheap spearmen are super helpful, you don't really want to get into a, you know, 10 scouts and 10 spearmen sort of situation. That's and you true. do want to work towards castle age. So again, Byzantines, that more defensive civilization, Tato, likely going to be focused more on holding on than trying to, uh, you know, blow his opponent out of the water. At least not yet. Yep, yep, absolutely. The docks will probably come up later, then Byzantines can be strong with their fires, too. Magyars don't really have any water bonuses that I know of, so I could swing towards they Byzantines They have shipwrecked for some reason. They, oh, they do get it. Yes, they do. All right, well, I mean, uh, I, I, I doubt we'll ever see the Magyar shipwright upgrade. <laughs> Uh, but if we see that, then, uh, we've, we've really seen something new. So, <laughs> both players have scouted here. It's another thing I like about this map. There's no deer. There's enough food where scouting and making decisions based on that is super important. And they both are lurking and very well aware that they are chopping towards each other here. Now, there's a lot of wood, but, um, eventually, this could be a, a, a big point of focus here. Whether that be a demo, uh, swinging around... Or a tower or something but the wood line's big enough where for now players should be able to wall in against demos and also a tower wouldn't work so kind of a a weird opening though which we'll see sometimes on this map 
Absolutely. So I'm not usually the biggest fan of players going forward because it's not like you have to wander too far to get to another good woodland. You just have to move slightly further into the swamp. Yep. And it will be a stable opening from heart. 17 pop-up is pretty fast, but remember, you do have the fish under the TC, so you have very smooth dark ages. Magyar's going sh uh, scouts, surprised Pikachu face, but what really is surprising is that very early dock from Tato. <laughs> oh, true. And he may not want to take heart towards that, right? This is much earlier than we've seen. He's pulling back towards the spear. Now Hart veers away. Now Hart will see the duck. Okay, so if you're Hart, you need to pre-wall everything. That Actually, what you could also do is if you can get a wall between his house and his stable, then the ships can't actually pass through at all. But he might be okay uh, absolutely. there. Absolutely, and you do not want to be running demos into buildings. It's almost never worthwhile. So even just having some palisades is enough to really deter demo ships from ruining your economy. Yeah. So it's something that, I mean, it also helps against scouts and spearmen and all that stuff. So really, I see no reason not, especially if you're hard right now, to not just get those palisades down, man. Yep. Yeah, kind of a shaky opening in some ways for Tato. He did get housed, but as we've established, this map is crazy. I think you'll see more idle TC time on average on this map than any other uh, of the maps that we've had in the qualifier just because of how much aggression there is. And actually, as I say that, Hart didn't have a house and then he gets Downwatch. <laughs> but Downwatch, a really nice upgrade to have here. And he does drop the Palisade wall. So Tato instead goes for a fire. An interesting move. I, I made a bold prediction yesterday, Orlando. I think the main event, we will see more fire ships and demos on this map because the players will have, have set up their bases in a way to not get surprised by demos but man tattoo don't tell me he's gonna get value from this uh well i mean the, the fire <laughs> just, just spewing that napalm through the forest not something we see every day uh that 2.5 range really coming in on the the fires there but no villagers have gone down yet but already disrupting that wood economy is quite impactful it's the only wood line here for heart yeah so that's already not the prettiest start in the world for our blue player yeah and he does have scouts around but it's not that many scouts on the front and byzantine fires are no joke and and you really don't want to be using spearmen or scouts to engage against a ship so tato could actually just use this fire to slowly take down the stable if he wants to but for now he's actually going for the palisade wall and tato's got i mean we talked about the defensive capabilities he's got for nine spearmen he's got so many spearmen hearts <laughs> probably gonna be like are you kidding me like come on man let me do a scout rush here uh, I mean, Hart plays with MBL. He's used to it. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, but on the other side, Tattoo did end up losing a villager. Even nine spearmen can't protect you against scouts that are well positioned on this map as you have the two forge bush patches. You are all out and exposed. So that's already something Hart can feel at least relatively happy about. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, missed that. I think it was right there on the berries, right? Where that dead scout yes, is, was. maybe. Yeah, Hart's yep. idle TC time is climbing, though. So the vill counts, he's actually behind because of that and that's the difficult thing on this map and you could just tell the moment maybe getting to heart again housed so first game of the series they need to warm up a little bit <laughs> as you can imagine <laughs> yeah first game of the day vibes right there for heart yep already over a minute uh, nine seconds idle time it's not too pretty and even comes in with the defensive tower what do you think about this decision I don't mind the tower if you are comfortable if you don't think your opponent's gonna be going range units right I think that of any map, this might actually be a map where you can go for multiple towers too, right? Like, just just put two villagers on stone and prepare for a tower on your gold too, and then I think you're okay. Because a lot of players are resistant to doing that because they think building a tower will eliminate the chances of TCs or, like, hurt their eco. But your eco is already garbage. So I think a couple towers isn't necessarily going to hurt here. Uh, and Tato uh, agrees, but... You know, he's going to build his first one offensively here, it looks like. Yeah, and that's the the thing with tower rushing is, you know, he who towers second will probably get a better tower location. Yeah. You see exactly where your opponent's tower is, so just build it one tile away, essentially, from the, the tower's range. And suddenly, Hart is going to need to move his wood line, which, I mean, logistically isn't that difficult. Just need to go around the corner. But positionally, tactically, you're going to be so much more exposed to Tato's uh, navy and spearmen. True. Yeah. I think Hart will try and take as much wood as he can there from the other side, but then we'll just have to take wood on the top now. His choice now, which could be huge for him, is he's mixing in archers. And Tato doesn't have an archer range. He doesn't have a stable. Tato's invested into the towers and into the navy. 
This actually gets really interesting because Heart's army here could be devastating to Tato. Even like four or five defensive spearmen in one area is not going to be enough once there's a couple archers in the mix. Yeah, and I mean, Heart still has some leftover scouts and spearmen of his own. It's not like these units are useless. And in fact, they're going to be great at pouncing on especially lower HP villagers. We do have the forging upgrade coming in for Tato, which is going to be nice in the spearmen war. Fire ships breaking through the palisade, but looks like uh, Heart is adequately defended there. But right now, Tato needs to rely on the uh, the pointy boy brigade. <laughs> Yeah, is, is armor useful here on your spears against the archers? I, like, I never want to do yeah. that because it feels like the spears still go down. But oh my god, look how many look how many spearmen <laughs> are here. That archer's really outnumbered. If uh, your spearmen aren't countering the archers, clearly you're not using enough spearmen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, man. that archer's almost dead at this point. And Tato still has to be careful, but he's got plenty more. I'm just waiting for Hart to escape right now because Tato is lurking in the shadows with a demo. And hold on, he's not lurking anymore. He's making a move, Orn Lu. He's going in towards the tower and he kills two villagers in the Spearman. Nice job there from Tato. Finally gets what we all expected from him. There we go. That's uh, when you sign up for a Tato series, that's what you want to see. <laughs> I would be disappointed if we don't see Guard Tower once or one demo ship hit. <laughs> also, the Spearman, the, the Spearman killed the Archer there. Also, just realizing, I think Spearmen are slightly faster than an Archer. Yeah, like it's one minimal. speed versus 0.96. Yeah, 0.96 against one. Interesting. So that explains why Hart wasn't able to get away there. But Hart ties up the KD with the Eco anyways and kills another Villager. Well played to him. And, uh, you know, still has five scouts there with the Magyars. The wood is an issue for him, but he needs to just leave this front area and take the wood on the hill. There's still enough wood up there so you can get by. I think Hart's distracted, though, because he's losing villagers to the fire galley as he's trying to micro uh, at Tato's base right now. Uh, that's another dead villager to the fire ships. Make that three more. And suddenly the fires can just camp underneath the tower and kill that eventually. This a little bit sloppy there from Hart. And, okay, Tato's coming with a defensive tower. He may lose some more villagers, but it still feels like, you know, his income is smoother overall. He's ahead in resources collected. Neither of these civs have eco bonuses to fall back on. So really just getting those sort of incremental advantages early on could really help snowball. Yeah, it's interesting. Tato actually has bought a lot of stone here. Like, he hasn't mined any of it. So he built his initial tower on Hearts Woodline. Now two defensive towers because he's been purchasing it. And Tato has got to be careful here... And in the end, he ends up just losing one villager, gets his tower up, and will defend. But you know, I like what Hart has done. Obviously, it's been awkward for Hart on water. It's probably annoying for him to now lose his stable and maybe his houses. But he's done a good job staying in this game. He just needs to stabilize his eco and maybe think about Castle Age. And forging is in for Tato's own scouts, so going to be able to kill the villagers more easily, and more are going to go down right there. Tato is ahead by four right now. I mean, Hart has the horse collar upgrade, which is nice, but... Yeah. Eh, Are, still, having oh, horse cars is especially castle. nice on this map when you don't have the lumber camp in the middle. <laughs> because yeah. you're going you're gonna to need that wood at some point. Tato kills another villager. Wow, you weren't really expecting Tato to switch into scouts when his opponent was on archers, right? Typically, it's, you're going to see that if your opponent's on skirms. But Tato just felt like I, I he had control of water and needed some control of land. And the scouts have paid off. Well, recognizing that Hart doesn't really have that much at home to defend, as you can't be as comfortably walled at home as you are on, say, Arabia, yep. and your resources are also further away. So the chances of your scouts finding something useful to do seems pretty high, and I definitely like that decision there from Tato. Yeah, I think Tato has stopped production of army now. He's just going to micro the scouts that he has. Same deal here for Hart, uh, at least with the scouts. He is still making archers, and I still do feel like... We haven't seen the best from those archers. I think the archers, you know, the, the early archers had spearman issues, and then the next two archers had tower issues. But if you have seven or eight archers with five or four scouts, you can still find damage here. So there, that's the chance back for Hart right now, as he has to defend from Tato. But Hart's going to click up first. And with the Magyars, getting the extra attack can be super nice in early Castle Age as well with the Knights. This is really a window Hart needs to take advantage of before the Byzantines can counter everything with the cheap units. 
Yeah, and I'm even wondering, do you want to go heavily into knights? Like, going for one or two just to do some raiding and stuff like that, that seems totally fine, but yep. it feels like going cav archers is going to set you up so much better in the long run versus Byzantines. It's much more difficult to go for skirmishers, and they're just in general a yep. much less threatening unit than other things Byzantines could go for. Yep. And I think would, I'd like to see Hart at least try and tech more long term in that direction. Yeah, he's definitely going to do it, Orlo, because he's adding the ranges now. Oh, there we are. Now, Tata's <laughs> going to Tata's going to recognize this. Um, if you're building a range at this point, that's going to be Cav Archers. And Tato kills another Villager, which makes it 9. Um, I like that. I also wouldn't mind one or two Knights, because that extra attack, yeah. it feels like you need to take advantage of it. Um, investing long-term could be tricky, but I think one or two Knights could be amazing. And something I wanted to say here is just how Tato set up his base so nicely. Look at how Hearts had to loop the whole way around to get to the most exposed area of this eco, which is this farming eco. And then the wood is super vulnerable for Tato and where he started, but Hart will never go in there because there can be demos or fires at any point in time. So finally finds a Vil pick, but I really like that from Tato. Yeah, so this is something that Tato can do because he has water control, right? Yep. Yep. You just know that your opponent can't send army up through the middle. It's way too dangerous. So build away from the land area that's closest to your opponent. Makes all the sense in the world. But it's not something that feels like super obvious to do. I mean, it's really a uh, clever play there from Tato that we would expect to see from him. Second TC immediately here for Hart, as well as some relevant Cav Archer upgrades. That's it. Of all the TCs to build up on this hill, that is a really good TC. You're next to a gold, and you have lots of trees. So that's a good TC for Hart. He obviously needs to catch up with villagers because of how many he's lost. But Cav Archers are going to start to come in. Tato is going to immediately go for plus two armor and start making camels. And that, that armor is very necessary if you're going to be up against Cav Archers. But if those camels get anywhere close to the Knights or CA, they are going to shred them. So Hart needs to really have his best micro here. Absolutely. But the nice thing with Magyar is you do have now the faster training Cav Archers. You can start to develop those numbers a little bit faster yep. uh, than you used to. You can even maybe sell some stone if you want to just to... Maybe either get an extra TC or make sure you keep the Cav Archer production consistent. Because once you get to a decent number of Cav Archers, suddenly even Camels, especially without Bloodlines, are going to struggle. Yeah, now now again, the, the problem for Hart is, where do I go? <laughs> Can I go out here? Because I think he's finally reached this point where he's like, I have to. right? Byzant Tato's probably booming. He killed more villagers. I need to pressure. And Tattoo's like, oh yeah, dude, you can come through. Go ahead, come through. I'm not, I don't have any ships here. And then surprise, and then he just goes right back to the shadows. I love this from Tattoo. This is perfect play. Absolutely. Those Cav Archers need to run for their lives. Oh, it's just not quite enough to one-shot the demo. Does nullify it, though, with some very nice unit control. This is what we expect from Hart, and absolutely the bare minimum of what we need to see for him to take this series. Yeah, exactly. And I think that the... I like that Hart's running through now, and I like that he's adding his own demos. I think it's really smart, but, you know, it's just one of those things, man. Even if Tato doesn't have a demo, Hart will have to second-guess every decision now through the middle. And if he goes to the outside, he will run into towers that Tato already has set up. Tato has just played this perfectly, and also played it perfectly for the Byzantines, because they always want to be playing in a defensive manner to make it difficult for their opponents to break them early, and... Oh, look at that. Hart can't go through with Tato. That's his gate, and he goes right through. And you know, he's right into Hart's eco, and Hart's going to have to deal with this. Yeah, Tato also got several more villager kills with camels on the backside. Ooh, <laughs> not, camel's true. not really your uh, obvious raiding unit, but yeah. hey, if your opponent just doesn't have anything there, they can absolutely get the job done. And Tato, by restricting the movement that Hart can do through the middle of the map, it enables him to, okay, I just need to defend one location, whereas Hart without that middle control, I mean, there's just so much surface area he needs to defend that it's not actually practical to do at all. Look at look at Hart go for some YOLO demos. He's like, I can do it too. And these two yeah. demos are just wandering out into the, into the darkness. There's nothing there for him to get right now. <laughs> That's wild. Oh, uh, yeah, there is uh, nothing that is especially close for Tato on the low ground. Tato, 14 villagers ahead, and that is only going to increase. He's going to a fourth town center. Demo going to blow up on a Byzantine Spearman. That's not value. And right now, Tato has just been controlling this game this entire time. Yeah, he's just so good. He's, he's amazing at this game, and, and this is why he's the favorite. But, you know, for Hart, first game of the series, you know you're the underdog here. 
but you also have to have a lot of belief in your ability. I know that he's been practicing a lot. And maybe, I, I, I would imagine Mudflow on paper is a really good map for him. But I'm sure there's some other maps where he'll see the potential. Excuse me for getting wins. Um, he, he's got to give it a shot here. He hasn't been killed off. He's obviously behind, but there's been no killer blow. And maybe these CA, because he hasn't lost many Cav Archers. Maybe they can get to a critical enough mass to really start to shoot down the Camels. And everything Tato has. And Tato doesn't have the Camels to defend right now. So already, Hart moving forward, finding his way through finally. Kills the Ville and distracts Tato. Tato's got like 20 idols right now. Yeah, that is a little bit rough. And as we're saying, it's about snowballing that number of Cav Archers. You just take efficient fights against the Camels. And yeah, you have a worse eco. But one way you can mitigate that is just if you can take efficient fights, then you don't need as many resources just to constantly be producing army. And that is at least a possible route back into this game here for hard. Yeah, I agree. Tato looped most of his camels home to heal up. At least I'm assuming so, because some of them are weak, so they could need it. Um, and Tato really starting to wall the middle. So I'm already starting to think this way. When it comes to the main event of Hidden Cup, right? A lot of the fun of it is trying to guess who's who and what did people do in the qualifier what what are main event players known for tato's fire galleys stand out a lot of players have just been going for demos tato's stone gating the whole way through the middle this is very rare and it's very smart because it allows him passage and his enemy cannot and oh god dude heart you've got to be careful oh. here man you've got to be careful he sees it oh man <laughs> Uh, heart is, is uh, short for heart attack on this map. Yeah, seriously, man. <laughs> it's too early in the morning to do this to my blood pressure, man. <laughs> and Tato's going to upgrade his ships too. But yeah, I'm definitely going to keep this one in the back of my mind. If Tato qualifies for the main event, because the stone gate, he's got, it's not like just one horn loot. Like he's done it multiple times now. And it's so much smarter than just walling because walling would, of course, block your own passage. So... I'm loving that from Tato, and Hart probably saw his that demo was bigger than his, and now he's he's a little he's even more scared to go through the middle. Well, thankfully, one demo rack can even kill a heavy demo ship. So even if you have the demo disadvantage, so yep. to say, yep. uh, you're you're able to make that you know trade happen. And now Tato with an interesting castle here on the side. It looks like he wants to go for a more concentrated push along the edge of the map. Uh, what do you think about this position? It is definitely a very eco-oriented position. It is a position where he feels like, I don't need to take any risks to win this game. Um, but I, I honestly would have loved it if he would have gone forward with his villagers, with those camels, and built a more aggressive one right in front of Hart's base. Because a Byzantine castle on the front of your base, that, that normally spells trouble for you. So I'm a little surprised that Tato's done that. I think he's done that for the gold there. But we'll see. Is Hart still in this game? Absolutely. I mean, he's behind, but not out by any stretch of the imagination, especially if he can keep the game in Castle Age and prevent Tato from utilizing the cheaper Byzantine Imperial Age. Yeah. But when it comes to the castle position, at the very least, I like that he's securing gold as we have another camel raid at the back of Hearts base, because we've seen so many players throughout the qualifiers to sort of be caught with their pants down because they're like, oh, wait, I'm out of gold. Yeah. And then have this really awkward transition where they just don't have that critical resource even in the mid game. So Tato making sure he's setting himself up as well as possible going forward. I love it. Yeah, a, a good moment here for Tato to kill villagers too, but an awkward moment because his camels have now gone forward. So he needs to have enough to defend from Hart's attack and he does get a conversion. He's got some camels. Hart's using the choke point. It, it feels like a fight that Tato is taking well enough, right? He's got a, enough camels in queue behind this. Even if he loses these camels, it's so cheap for him to always add more. And it's also way easier for Tato to control. He can just kind of patrol his units through and let them do their thing. And then Hart has to micro. And Hart's Cav Archer Mass, it, just as he completes Ballistics, is down to 12. And he's got very little of that at home. And this is looking so much better for Tato now. He's got a 30 villager lead. And that castle on the gold, like we said, and he's set up for late game. I mean, this is just absolutely beautiful. Hart going to have to tap out. That game went from, okay, it's a little bit of a disadvantage to Hart to, oh my goodness, this is all over. Yep. Tato just busting into the base with the camels. And as you're saying, it's just not really practical to try and control two groups of cav archers on the opposite side of the map against camels at the same time. Yep. And wow, that game was pure Tato. Yeah, and a really interesting approach, a really Tato approach to this game, if you know who he is. He went defensive with the Spearman, and uh, then from there, he was good to go. Um, the dock early, that I think that's the earliest dock that we've seen. 
on Mudflow, uh, because he wasn't even on gold at that point. That one fire galley, the tower, everything was just so smart. But okay. you know, the consistency that Tato has is why everyone thinks he's going to win this series today. And he ended this game with TCs everywhere, eco everywhere, and he gets the one nil lead. So kind of a tricky one for Hart. I think you have to look at uh, the upcoming map and try and find a map where you can actually get into your groove. Because he was never able to really get good flow in this game. Like, I think he had three scouts initially in early feudal and then kind of just ran out of steam or maybe he ran into too many spearmen. Um, if I'm Hart, I'm going Arabia or Slopes or something where there's no water and <laughs> you can just feel comfortable again because that was not it. Absolutely. It's... And, and I think that's the thing with Hart, especially if he does get nerves in tournaments, which he absolutely does. Just get comfortable, right? Mudflow, it's a map where Tato can do Tato things against you. So I think just trying to play a more standard game is going to be the name of the game here for a great part. Oh, here we there are. We game go. number two. No problems here. And uh, we've got Slopes and we've got Tato has gone for the Khmer, a pick that I love and can't wait to talk about. And then we've got Hart on the other side who's gone for the Vietnamese. And what we just said, Ornlu, is probably what Hart was thinking. Game number one, yes, it is an open, messy, aggressive map, and he likes to be very open and aggressive, but he doesn't like messy, right? So this is something <laughs> that could be a bit cleaner for him, and he feels like to tie it up with Tato, he needs a map which is a bit more standard. And that's very much what we see from Slopes, because... I mean, th this map has gone through a few different iterations throughout the various Hidden Cups. I remember you way back at NAC3 telling me how excited you were for this very map. <laughs> really? I don't remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you uh, hadn't announced uh, Pants and Slopes yet, and you were like showing me all these images like, oh, man, this is going to be such great map for the Hidden Cup, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, what I like yeah. about it is there's there's a lot of variation with the the choices of expansion right um yeah. and and i've seen different play styles depending on civs so for example i've seen byzantines be more prone to castle push the middle because that could be a lot more devastating with if they get access to that stone and gold in the faster imperial age but then i've seen civilizations like um the magyars want to build their castles up on the on the slopes on the hills long term and then on top of that, you have the food. And then we see some players do, and I think a lot of players are going to choose to do this because it's safer. Uh, they'll just push in the hunt towards their TC from there and not really take any risk. But then maybe a Civ like Khmer here, Orlu, can take the risk. And I think Tata will do that here. You can you can build the house up on the shore, uh, up on the hill. And if there is any trouble, you can just hop into that house. So I feel like there's a big reason to take the risk here for Tato. Yeah, the thing with... Both Khmer and Vietnamese, is they're, they're very flexible, right? I mean, Khmer have an insane eco bonus. Khm Vietnamese are at the very least solid. They have tons of different options they can go for. Tato is certainly somebody who's going to use that house bonus on the hill. And in general, I like the idea of, okay, you can push the, the Ibex from one side, and then you can mill the other one so you can just get as much early food income as possible. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, because the other side's still going to be there. Yeah. And then I'll be very curious on the scouting because I uh, think there have been a couple examples where players who don't want to mill the resources push in so many deer and then they get surprised by something. Now, I think here the Khmer are a little bit more predictable, but I think Ganji against Ozone uh, and then it was, um, shoot, who went for, there was, a, there was a Drush yesterday, I believe, on this map, which may have surprised somebody and, and it's... Oh, yeah. I, I forget, but... There, there is the games all blend together, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there are some sneaky things you can do, um, and and we'll see if that happens. Now, kind of a funny thing, like I think Vietnamese are so good now that you can't really doubt them without factoring in this bonus. But this is one of a few maps we have where the positions are fixed, so you will know where your opponent's TC should be based on the orientation of the map. So Hart is Vietnamese, which also tells him where the opponent's TC is. I feel like that bonus is kind of a waste here on slopes. Yeah, that doesn't really do all that much for you. But I mean, with Vietnamese, you have the solid economy and the good tech tree. So I, I don't think you really need to worry about that all that much. Yep. Something I actually think that could be really strong for Vietnamese on this map is uh, Cav Archers. Khmer don't love facing that unit. You don't have any real bonuses to your own archers or knights. Scorpions can be OK, but it's not the best. 
And the Cav Archer Civs tend to do pretty well. And if there's anything I know about medieval Vietnam, it's that it was mass Cav Archers and light Cav. <laughs> I don't know if that's sarcasm or not, Orlu. It is sarcasm. Uh, that's what I figured. <laughs> 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 that's what I figured. I, I'm pretty sure that like when they added the bonus, like obviously we know that Age of Empires 2 is not the most historically accurate, right? No. In some cases. But but like I'd like to think that they were like, okay, this is a foot archer, like infantry civilization. And they're like, okay, we give their archers more HP. And they had probably assumed it's just going to be Arbalest. And then somewhere along the line, someone figured out, oh, the Cav Archers get extra HP too. That's really good. Let's do that. And now it's kind of part of their, their high-level gameplay. And they're not going to go back from that now. So I wonder if, like, initially, yeah. they actually wanted people to be going for crazy heavy Cav Archers with Vietnamese, or if that was kind of just like an afterthought. I don't know. Uh, I think they actually changed the bonus thinking way back to Rise of the Rajas to include Cav Archers for that very reason. Interesting. But I think especially in, like, the current meta, well, uh, before the, the tournament patch where Archer pathing was just so suspect, yep. that Cav Archers could at least react to bad pathfinding better, so we just saw those a lot more often, even with, a uh, you know, a supposed foot archer sieve like Vietnamese. Okay, good. Yeah, ma makes sense. Yeah, I didn't remember the early balance. I remember there were some crazy bonuses back then, though. And already we see Tato with his house next to his mill, and he's gonna go for those resources. Now you look at Hart, this is what I was talking about, right? Look at Hart scouting right now. So he's scouting Tato's base, and he now he does not see a mill on the berries, which should mean he should check, and he can use process of elimination if he really thinks about this. If he looks at this side, and doesn't see as much hunt, or doesn't see the villagers, he should then assume, especially with Tato being Khmer, that Tato is on the other side, and I would go directly there, because you're gonna have four exposed villagers, the rest of the eco from Tato is going to be next to a TC and probably houses as well. So you got to at least give it a shot and see if you can make Tato work for it. I mean, at the very least, you can deny the income. And yeah. that, that alone just feels worthwhile. And mm, especially because Tato is going to be walling up at home on his wood line. He's not on gold yet. Just going for his own scouts. It feels sort of a natural point that you can contest. And what's always a little awkward with Khmer if you're going for the scout war is that you skip the barracks, you try and avoid it going spearman if at all possible, but that means you just don't want to take straight up fights. So Hart needs to do everything he can to force Tato to take those fights. Yep, and and like you said, I think Tato has the house there already, so he should be able to save himself, but you don't want to be sitting inside that house for too long. So here come the scouts, and here comes the spearman as well. Hart's going to make Tato work for this, does get some hits. He's expecting Tato to fight back, and Tato doesn't at all. And now Tato's paying attention. And like we said, Villager might need to hop inside the house here, but Tato will bring his own scouts over. And it's been... This is the big conversation so far, right? Tato making use of the side resources. Hart kind of playing safe at home. But the safe approach for Hart at home is not bad at all. His eco is flying right now. Absolutely. Uh, slightly ahead in resources, even relative to his opponent. He's got Bidax and Horse Collar, everything he could want there. And this game is going as well for Hart as you could expect. And this should hopefully be giving him a little bit more of that confidence boost, saying, okay, I can just play my game versus Tato, rely on my mechanics, and just take it to mid game. Yep. Yeah, where it can get really awkward for the Khmer. But you do have to be careful here. Because Tato is no stranger to, to making a couple extra scouts. And Tato with map control can do some crazy things. And Tato's just going to take this Spearman out. And now he, he has all his scouts alive. And Hart's going to have to back away here. Um, yeah, I, I have to say, this patch... I, I obviously tested it a great deal. In the end, At the end of the day, it was my decision on if we used it. Um, but just watching the games has brought me so much joy <laughs> uh seeing yeah. the units group properly like even with the scouts man a lot i know a lot of people stopped going archers as much with the patch but the regrouping was constant every time units would be clicked and i'm watching these units move right now and it just feels like age of empires 2 again so uh, thank you to the devs for giving us something Seriously? for this tournament <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i mean it's uh no I i've noticed it as well like you just it's so much more comfortable players like okay, I can actually use my micro skills to yep. the best of my abilities to take good fights, and I'm not fighting the game as much. Yes. Yeah, that's that's a that's a perfect way to say it. You know, a lot of times, players were, were trying to get their units to the right position instead of trying to, to compete against their opponent here. 
So Tata with nine scouts, no spears, and Hart is almost completely walled. So this is at a point where you can actually vacate your base with any spearmen defensively and bring them forward. And I mean, we, we knew that this was going to be an aspect of Tato's play here with the Khmer. And Hart figured out that this was an aspect of his play. And he has not allowed Tato to rest here at all. I love it. But Tato's getting forging, so this could get even crazier here soon. Absolutely. And this is what I was saying. With If you're the scout plus Spearman Civ, just do everything you can to take the direct fight. Yep. Force Tato to be in this position. Don't let him just cruise his way to Castle Age. Also, Tato's doing the weird thing he does with Khmer and just not take the forge bushes at all. Yeah, that is interesting, right? I think I would always take the forge bushes, but I guess those farms are really your, your long-term consistent friend. So, man, I mean, Hart did just give up on the hill for a moment here, and this is giving Tato time. Tato's going to go. He already has forging. He's getting bloodlines now. Could maybe get armor. But, yeah, I mean, how many times are you going to get an opportunity to kill four villagers from Tato? Not too many. So I think you just stay here, attack that house, and force Tato to fight this. Crazy stuff here, Ornlood. The, the house is still weak-ish. I think that could be a target as well. Like, I'd like to see Hart just attack that house and wait. And the spears are there. I think Tato... I, I don't know how he gets himself out of this. I don't think he can take a good fight. By the way, are you there? Or did you drop? Okay, I'm not hearing Ornlood. So he may have dropped. Uh, I assume that I could be oh, heard. Nope. Oh, nope. You, I could hear you now. We're good. Okay. Sorry about that. All good. No worries. All right. Sorry. So, uh, as I was saying, Tato adds in the second stable, so he's just doubling down on the scout play. Was this a dog-related pause? It was. I have a dog. In case you guys can't hear. <laughs> All good. No worries. I just heard the ruff, ruff. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, so more scouts from Tato. He's going to click up. He still has four villagers that aren't collecting resources, though. So I think Hart's done a great job to punish this. Now, as he brings forward more spearmen, he is going to lose those. And Tato refuses to lose these villagers in and out of these houses. <laughs> you would only do this with the Khmer. And Hart clicks up to Castlade slightly faster than Tato. What, what, is, what a fun game. Like, this has been... I love how Hart knew that taking the sides against heavy scout play would be risky, but then also recognized that Tato will take the risk and go out to those resources. Super nice. Uh, Yeah, I mean, the crazy thing to me, though, is that Tato is able to take all but five food from one shore fish, True. and he's still going to get home with all the bills. Yes, yeah. there is idle time. That isn't good. But, I mean, at the end of the day, like... You're fine if you're Tato. You're on your way up to Castle Age, just a few seconds slower than your opponent. He's still slightly ahead in resources collect, uh, collected. So, yeah, Tato's fine. And and he made that look so easy. Like, getting away with those vills there, he just found the moment where Hart stepped away. It's so impressive from Tato to be able to do that. 7 to 2 KD here. He's got a whole lot more scouts than Hart does. Both players are actually making lots of scouts here which is very unique. We've seen, like, knights, we've seen camels, we've seen crossbow, but I, I think more often than not, we've actually seen players walling up and going for an archer switch while on the way to Castle Age. We're not seeing them make more scouts like this. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, you can just see the second that Tato turns around to try and take the fight, there are simply too many spearmen. Yeah. I mean, yeah, forging is great and all, but you even have the scale mail armor upgrade coming in for Hart. I mean, he is really going to be leaning into the spearmen, recognizing that Tato... I mean, if Tato is going to stubbornly not go for the archery range, then yeah, just keep making spearmen, man. Yep. Yeah, maybe just early squires here. <laughs> I don't. I think <laughs> Vietnamese do get it. It's Portuguese that don't. And maybe yeah, one other Portuguese Sith. don't get it. Khmer don't get it. Yeah. yeah and that, so Tato, he's not going to want to be going for that. And like have upgrade for Tato. It goes for the attack upgrade as well. So he'll have full attack for Castle Age. And instantly drops TCs, but he's not expanding at all. He's just staying nice and compact here. Hart also getting light cap. And Hart, in some ways, has to be feeling very good about how much control he has. He's the player who normally wants to dictate the pace of the game. But also, at the same time, there, mu there might be a feeling being down a game of, how am I supposed to break this guy? <laughs> it's not easy. I mean, and the, the crazy thing is, Tato isn't even full walled. Like, he is just hanging in there. His eco is about as compact as possible. Yep. 
And he's going to try and maybe drag the army of heart back towards his base. Just give Tato a bit more room to maneuver. Even getting the fletching upgrade. I guess this is just for the TCs because I don't see any ranges anywhere. Yeah, I think Tato just hit a moment where he said, I'm going to abandon my base. And he thought ahead of time and about fletching, which is interesting. Normally, players are not going to research that until the units are underneath their TCs. So to preemptively research that is some interesting foresight there from Tato. Uh, he does take out some random pikes, and Tato did scout the right side, and he knows that Hart hasn't expanded there. And Hart just now realizes that Tato is not on the sides as well with these TCs, because you're not going to have a fourth at this point. So he sees that Tato is, is very much cramped in here, and he's going to try and punish Tato for not defending himself right now. Keep in mind, Tato, zero spearmen against all these horsemen. And still, zero losses for Tato against this attack. As I say that, he loses one, but the TC has fletching. The Tato should be okay, and now Tato's over at Hart's base. Yeah, uh, Hart himself, if he's paying attention, shouldn't really be taking any damage. For his part, Tato, he's on three TCs, so he's going to be slightly ahead in villagers, as uh, Hart is only on two. Hart, I really hope he doesn't just let a bunch of light cav into his base. All right, getting those uh, repairs in time, it seems. Tato, though, at the end of the day, he's still not losing anything. Yep. He's getting these scorpions. They can help push away any unit, especially with that extra range with Khmer. And Tato can't really be that unhappy with the current situation. And Tato, happy to just play with more and more Cav here. And it, it's been impressive. And he's been able to utilize the Khmer bonuses quite well. There he has to back away, of course. There's a lot more. But he's sitting on scorpion defense at home. Lots of farms with the Khmer. And then also the light Cav, which just... I guess they don't really have any specific light cap bonuses, but of course it just feels natural with this eco. So love that from Tato. Uh, love the fact he now knows that Hart is on the right side. That light cap got killed off. Nice shot from Hart to realize that. But that could be a target area for Tato raids, especially if this becomes a really big castle age play from Tato. Well, and that is every indication at this point. Still making some knights is Tato. The one thing he is going to need to think about is just securing some more gold long term. Yeah, you have your main gold, and that's going to be fine for now. But he's going to need to push out onto the map. Yep. And uh, right now, I guess if he can pounce on his opponent's army when it's just not protected. I mean, Hart has the larger army, and it does win in a straight-up fight. But Tato using that mobility quite expertly. Yeah, and then this is the this is a great example um, of of a play the majority of Age of Empires players can't relate to. Right, uh, a lot <laughs> of people going Cav will see the pikeman and say, "Oh no, he's countered me." Right, uh, but Tato just says, "Oh, actually, I will just avoid your." counter units and then you will spend time chasing me and I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's actually a lot of people that can relate to knights running and hoovering around their base as the pikemen chase at this point because everyone's gotten so good right and there's more and more experienced yeah. players but the point is is like that pikeman upgrade was supposed to do something for heart hasn't really done that much because of tato's amazing unit control Absolutely, and he's actually developed towards seven scorpions at this point. That is uh, not messing around numbers of scorpions, as I say. Ooh. And, I mean, we're kind of getting towards the point when Tato can maybe start to think about just pushing out across the map as we have a big light cap and night raid into the base of Hart. But for his part, Hart should be fairly well defended. Yeah, I mean, it, it will really... This is a big moment of harassment for Tato. The problem for him is if he doesn't kill enough villagers... He might, have not, he might not have a big army anymore. So, at the moment, it seems like it's worth it, though. Hart was unable to track some of the light cap towards the north and towards the gold. Atos killed nine villagers now. Of course, Hart has all his army at home. There's a lot of idle time. There's a lot of messiness here where it's, there's not for Tato. But now that army count does spike for Hart, so he can move forward. And I am just so excited to see... Does Tato feel confident enough to move out with those seven scorpions? <laughs> because seven Khmer scorpions, they're no joke here, man. Absolutely not. I mean, you, like, one scorpion that you see so often, or, like, two scorpions, like, they do so little that you think it's just not, like, that great. But once you start getting a lot of them down, they'll just kill everything all at once. Yep. But I love Tato. He knew he had map control, so he moved out to the side with his villagers and Monk to go for the TC on the gold. But Hart was at the very least looking at that spot. So he knows what Tato's trying to do right now. And with his army advantage, he's at least the best poised he could be to stop that. But that is lining him up right there. Oh, man. The Hart just ran right into the scorpions. I mean, Hart had the right idea. He knew Tato was moving out there. But he needed to position his units in literally any other way. 
and maybe the light cab would have survived. So Heart realizes, okay, those are Khmer Scorpions. There's seven of them. Maybe I don't have time. And Tato will drop a very important TC on the side, which is his gold side. So that's what Heart did on the right side. And that's what he does now on his left. And then beautiful house falls here from Tato, not to take losses from Heart as he runs through the middle. Tato has the eco lead. And he's starting to amass some amazing night numbers here. Just crazy to me that he still hasn't lost more than one villager. It is absolutely wild. Yes, he's had some idle time, but he's still way ahead of his opponent in terms of resources collected. He's on one more TC. He's picking up relics. I mean, this is just Tato playing at the level we know he can. And I mean, he's just become such a consistent player these days. And yeah. we are really seeing that play out in the series. Yep. Everyone, uh, I mean, to see him in the qualifier, obviously we based it on the results of the previous Hidden Cup where Tato lost first round. And... Everyone's just been like, where's Tato in the invite list? Why is Tato not on the invite list? Tato this, Tato that. And there's a reason for it, man. <laughs> Dude is just playing amazing. Like, Hart is is probably still in a pretty good spot to be one of the favorites to qualify to be in this event because there's a backup qualifier if he were to lose. And he's right now not quite being able to keep up with Tato's eco. But finally, I mean, almost poor timing for me. Hart's finding a lot of damage uh a lot of damage being five villager kills but that's more than one and he has control of the that game right now correct, so. <laughs> <laughs> i said a lot uh, and then i looked at the numbers and realized tato had killed so much more uh and the scorpions yeah, I mean, are the forward time, now it was just wrecking the info in its economy now the scorpions are showing up too oh man oh uh, well i mean the scorpions are slow right so they shouldn't as long as heart is a little bit patient here and he brings over some knights. These, these scorpions being forward, this shouldn't be a positive for Tato, in my opinion. I think this is something that should be used usually in defense. All those scorpions are going to get surrounded. Very well played from Heart. Scorpions aren't cheap. So that was maybe a big misstep from Tato because they could be useful at home. I do think that Tato is kind of shifting away from even needing the scorpions, Ornlu. He's got 17 knights. He's got full upgrades on them. And he wants to build a castle here soon. So we might have a... We might have a different type of scorpion if he can get that castle down. Yeah, the power of the ballista elephant will not be gainsaid. But for the time being, Tato is going to need to place that castle in a more defensive location. Tato has been, in general, trading army for villagers, which is getting him further ahead economically. But right now, in the straight-up fight, especially with those scorpions going down, Hart's army is better. What Hart needs to do is he needs to recognize this, and he needs to, like, really go after Tato, like, right now. That castle is coming in. It's going to secure more gold for Tato, and that's exactly what he's going to need going towards late castle, early Imperial this Age. This is crazy. I mean, the sides are so important, right? But if you are booming up there, and you only have so much space to hide villagers in the TC, you are going to have a lot of exposed economy, and that's exactly what happens here for Hart. He does react to this. He garrisons immediately. He's bringing over Pikeman to defend. But Tata found more Vil kills. And just when Hart was thinking he had some confidence on the front, he's going to see a castle from Tato. As Tato is imping right now. How? As he made so many knights. And, and is sitting on the way to the Imperial Age right now. That's ridiculous. Well, when you have, uh, what is it, around 6,000 more resources collected, that is uh, that is absolutely something you can do. And just so many knights here for Tato, running around constantly, not bothering with uh, the pikemen at all as much as he can help. And the army of Heart, it's now predominantly pikemen. It's not the scariest offensive unit in the world. Yep. Tato just so snug at home, he's now going to drop another castle forward, and he's just slowly creeping out to get the resources when he needs them. I think one of the most visually satisfying things in the game, and there's a lot of things we could tack onto this list, but watching the Khmer food count climb with their farms. Oh yeah. The fact that it ticks up like that and other sieves, it's a little bit more gradual is, is always very satisfying. And Tato oh, is you think played... people play cookie clicker, man? <laughs> I never played cookie clicker, but Tato's obsessed with it, funnily enough. Really? Yeah, um, Tato, uh, we were uh, maybe having some drinks at NAC. Uh, and Tato had the day off, I had the day off, and, uh, so we were up till 5 a.m. playing some age, right? And yeah, Tato yeah. said, Tato said, cookie clicker time, and pulled up cookie clicker and was clicking <laughs> away! <laughs> 5 a.m. Oh, man. Uh, oh, big fight great. here, and those pikemen go down, and, and as Tato builds castle number two towards the middle, uh, he's just so far ahead right now. Like, he's got a 30 villager lead similar army counts and he's going to be in the imperial age I, I just don't know how this guy does it
Uh, he is outplaying Hart in basically every way. His macro's cleaner, His he's taking better fights, his unit movement's better. I mean, yeah, GG, like, jeez, man. Yeah, Calm and... down there, Tata. I, what I love about this is that pretty much every game I remember on slopes is, I, I'd say a high percentage of them players never take the risk with the villagers and build the mill. That's the first thing, okay? Tato did, but he never lost the vills, which well played to him. But the other thing that almost always happens, whether you're milling the side resources or not, is the players are full walling their starting base. And Tato never did that. He didn't full wall his starting base. He played open, and he just played with army this entire time. A lot of that was probably due to the Khmer's ability to do so, but only we've seen players play like that with Khmer and get punished for it many times because they can't control the game with military, right? So I don't think Hart had a bad game. I think he had a great game, but I think he's just up and against an elite player now, and Tato is now two wins away from qualifying for the main event of Hidden Cup 5. And, uh, man, I mean, looking like this, maybe it'll be pretty easy to spot in the main event <laughs> with, with this play. It's insane. Who's the guy killing everybody else? Oh, yeah, that, that Tato. Yep. <laughs> Crazy. Res collected, of course, extremely satisfying there with 17,500 food, uh, 7,000 gold. It, more of every single resource, actually, which, again, isn't that common. And here we are saying the same thing about heart. And how he has to try and find a map that can play a little bit more towards his strengths and away from Tato's strengths, if there are any out there. Uh, here we are, game three. So we have a lot to talk about on cross, right? There's going to be a point where we can't really talk civs and, and strategy. But what do you think about the Persians? Because they're, they've are they been picked first, the second most in the drafts, and they have a win rate of about like 28%. Uh... Yeah, that's that's tricky. It's it's kind of strange, right? Because Persians have everything they need to excel on um, a map like Cross. Yep. You can go for the early dock. You have the fast working TCs and docks. You can go with the forward dock in your opponent's pond, and with the extra HP, it's almost impossible to take out easily. And but I mean, they struggle, I think, especially against Japanese and taking very efficient fights. Yeah. So I was going to say, I think, so obviously with any of the win-loss data we have, in a qualifier where you have the first two rounds especially, there being heavy favorites, you have to take any bit of data with a massive grain of salt, right? Um, but I've noticed with Persians, they're picked a lot for this map, and Japanese are is another strong pick for this map. I think Japanese is usually going to be able to have a really strong army comp against them, right? You have the pikemen, you have the monks, even cav archers, right? So maybe that's part of it. Um, I think another thing that I've I've felt with the Persians is that uh, sometimes in the mid game, your TCs are, mo are moving so fast, they're producing so quick. Players always want their uh, TCs to be producing. And I've realized it's really difficult for people to actually make knights while on one or two TC, or like two or three TCs rather, with the Persians because you need so much food to be able to produce out of those TCs yep. that quickly and also make the knights. So it's just kind of a fun thing. It's a unique thing, but maybe players with Persians need to idle their TC a little bit in Castle Age. I don't know. <laughs> the problem with that though is then you don't have an eco bonus and you have a rather middling tech tree at that point. And against Agreed. a civ like Japanese who just have stronger military options, good monks, great cav archers. I don't get me started on the cav archer bonus that feels completely random and don't and know why the civ is so good at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I agree that bonus felt very forced, but it is in the game. And we'll see how it goes. But the big thing here with the Persians, uh, specific to this map, is the docks are incredibly strong. So um, if you are able to get a dock up on your opponent's pond, good luck to the opponent taking it out in Feudal Age. They're that strong. Now, on the other side of things, the Japanese have the strong fishing ships. So I think both of these civilizations actually have uh, good defensive bonuses for Cross, which is... Why sometimes I'm noticing players will not even try and uh, like build a dock on a Japanese or Persian pond. They will instead just kind of go to the other areas. So uh, Tato is saying something, I believe, about servers here. I can't translate that. So hopefully there was there's no lag for them. Uh oh, but yeah. uh, we we continue on here. <laughs> I I don't know how your Spanish is, but uh, uh, not very good. Yes. <laughs> 
Okay. I took French, man. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, um, I uh, took very little of of either. So I think they're talking about potentially there being a ping issue. Tato is maybe feeling some lag. We're we're back into it. Heart now is down now here towards the south with the stock, and then we've got Tato docked in the north. Uh, another thing that the Japanese can bring to the table here is some insane flexibility for the man at arms, and it's just their potential to fish and also get man at arms on a map where usually it's hard to afford the all those things at once is probably second to none. So I think Japanese number one with the man at arm opening, but Hart should expect that in some ways here, Orlu. We've seen it a lot from Japanese on this map. But the thing is, it's usually been fairly effective just because you are spreading yourself out a little bit no matter what when you're going for the, the early dock. Players, even if they try and go for a quick archery range follow-up behind it, it's difficult to do everything at once. Mm -hmm. So the men at arm play has been fairly consistent so far, I would say. I mean, Japanese are, what, 5-0 and against merchants on this map, so that, that checks out. But... I still like the idea of even if you just go for a forward dock with Persians and you just build one fishing ship inside Ooh, or one you, fire ship. Did you catch that? So Tata was sending a villager and the villager had a net in his hands, right? So that had been clicked to a shore fish and Hart saw it. And then Tato clicked on another resource real quick, fought the vill, and then kept running the other way. So it still seemed to me like Hart could have picked up on the fact that vill is going to dock the other side. But it was an interesting moment here because Hart couldn't do anything to deny it, but he might have that information now. And that might be why Hart is sending a vill to the left. He may be looking to wall, but no, I think Hart knows that and is going over there to contest that. That's very interesting. Well, wouldn't the villager just going in that direction all by itself kind of indicate a dock? Yeah, 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 in, in some ways. The net, <laughs> the net was an extra element that I needed to point out. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, but at the very least oh some nice quick balling there for tato i think he has enough room for a dock uh yeah just bling the palisade there and oh look how romantic those docks are yeah romantic docks and hart brought his scout over tato knows he's been spotted and his scout's not here he's trying to scout hart's base and hart is not full walled by any means and Tato did not go for man at arms, by the way. He's just going to be going for scouts. Now, this is not something Hart can scout because there's so many things to scout on this map, Ornlu. So he will be a little bit surprised by this. I think there still might be a part of him that's waiting for man at arms to arrive right now. Yeah, I wonder. Um, the second dock as well here for Hart. Uh, like I was saying earlier, something you can do with Persians is you can just have one fire galley garrisoned in the dock, and it takes so long yeah. to actually take down that Persian dock that you can invest, force a lot of investment from your opponent. But Hart's saying, nah, man, I am just going to overwhelm you with the power of these Persian docks, and he is making a really concerned effort to win water, but Tato's saying, hold my uh, cerveza, because... <laughs> Yeah, you We're know what's interesting here. is I think Tato is making a second dock because he thinks Japanese need two to beat Persians one. And then it's going to be two docks for both here. But I do love how Hart's on seven fishing ships behind this. That's really good. Uh, that Just that starting dock has been producing fishing ships so consistently. I don't think you want to go over that number too far. But it's a good thing for Hart to do that. Tato is doing the same at his pond. And again... Does Hart know Tato's going scouts? He still hasn't seen the stable. So any additional scout play from Tato could be a surprise. And here we go. Hart knows now that one scout is weak. And Hart fights it off very nicely here. Uh, a lot of players don't have that confidence. And that could have led to a dead villager here. Hart micros again as well. And he's making a spears. Really clean play from Hart right now. Absolutely. Uh, just immediately focuses the low HP scout. So not just recognizing that the scouts are incoming, but realizing which one's the low HP scout and going for that fight. But Tato, of course, <laughs> scouts can so often just find a way to get damage done no matter what. And that will be the uh, first dead villager for Heart in this game. Although fire ship numbers are actually even, but Tato's are just chilling in the docks for now. Yeah, Heart's got to be careful. He has three ships in the same spot, like stacked between the docks. Yeah. And Tato has a demo on the way. This could be brutal. Oh, God. Not against Tato um, Hart. Oh! Oh, my ow. God. That demo hit all four ships there. Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah. That was not the greatest moment of unit positioning there for Hart. And now Tato oh. just going to be surging. What? Oh. 
Are you kidding me, Tato? Seriously, man. Tato I, mean, I know Tato's the... good with demo ships. You don't need to make it that easy. <laughs> that, those were the dream demos for Tato. And, uh, Tato, 8 1KD now. And hard with all this investment. Like, he had the docks up faster. He had the ship lead. Just wasn't able to get the positioning. And, and I think we do have to bring it back to think about land, right? Think about how land is being played out now. And Hardis has to be very reactive there. He has to be paranoid and worried about Tato. And so Tato paid off. It paid off for him big time there on the water. Behind this, he's also going to go Archers too. So Archers can help against the Spear defense. It feels like Hardis wants to just go up to Castle Age here with very little activity in Feudal Age. But uh, I could see him getting punished very easily by the Archer switch. Well, there is a huge hole open on the right side of his base. So, eh. Something that Hart's going to need to keep in mind. Can click up the Castle Age at least fairly soon. And at least Hart is still actually slightly ahead in resources collected. Yep. Is trying to dock over in the east and actually will save the villager from Tato's scout. Although it's going to, I think, delay the dock. No, I think the Vil can build that. Yeah, Vil, Vil should be able to build that. Tato knows that. It wouldn't surprise me if we see an archer hit over that way to kill that Vil. And I think Tato's doing the right thing here. Trying to loop around to see if your opponent is open is a risky move. Because by the time you get there that may just be walled up anyways. What you can do is you can get immediate damage here by trying to break through this wall. But I mean, good job from Hart here to have the res to click up the castle and play defensive there. He will be able to click up. It's just, can he defend on land against scouts and archers for the next couple minutes here? Well, at this point, Hart is about fully walled. He can click up the castle age right now. There we go. And even Persians research castle age a little bit faster. Uh, are we going to see a second stable, though? Because you're going to need at least uh, several units to clean up Tato's army. I mean, Tato has a fairly sizable land army. Yeah. And he's not going to be too far behind, either. I think he needs a tower right now. Like, I, I get what he's trying to do here with the houses. But once this once this house goes down, the archers are going to be so much closer. And he's playing real real cute with it and trying to pull back the weak vills. But you just sometimes you just have to drop the tower, Ornlu. And this is as good a time as any for Hart. You cannot let these units break in. You cannot lose villagers to this. Absolutely not. Uh, well, one goes down right there. Possibly another one. She does escape. Tower is going to come up. I like that the tower is at least on the high ground, so it can uh, kill these units at least a little bit more effectively. And, uh, I mean, you lose some bills there. It's not the end of the world, even if it isn't as pretty as I think we would have liked. Yeah, your TC still works faster. You're still in Castle Age way faster. There's ways to recover from this if you're heart. Still do need to keep people updated on the left side pawns. The heart hasn't given up on it. Tato's slowly working away at this dock. It looks like there's just going to be one dock remaining here from heart. I mean, if heart gets a big demo, he can still be competitive on this pawn. But it does feel like he's going to lose this one. And he does have the one on the right side right now. He actually made two fire galleys. He was that paranoid that Tato was going to go over there because Tato scouted him. He made two fire galleys there, which is <laughs> insane. Yeah, that is uh, very safe. And the war galley upgrade is going to come in immediately. And perhaps with those castle age ships in, you can take better, uh, slightly better fights. But the thing is uh, with fire ships is that they're only a little bit better than fire galleys when the two units are fighting each other. So it's yep. really that 20 extra HP that matters. I think the demo can make a big difference, though, inside that dock. Um, there are three ships that are clumped, so that could help. And that's definitely something Hart needs right now. And he also needs the... Uh, yeah, he pops out. Nice job. That's oh. a beautiful demo for Hart. That's exactly what he wanted. And he also will have the knights at home to work with. Tato notices this. Lands as good a demo as he can ask for. Still can be remain competitive here, but nice job from Hart. Absolutely. Uh, another fire ship coming out there for Hart. And although Tato won water super decisively early on, it didn't actually translate to much, right? Yeah. How much how much value is winning water with fire ships when you can only make one fishing ship? It's not that big of a deal. So this is about as good as Hart could ask for. Although a couple demos, of course, can get the absolute perfect hits because Tato. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and even fight now. Tato going to get Bodkin now for the archers. Of course, Crossbow should come in too. Tato is not, once again, not completely walled. And he will drop a town center as well as send two vills over to the east. So I think he will try and dock there. Tato's army activity has been amazing. Hart has the eco lead, though, with 10 fishing ships. So he's got some on the right side. He's also got this su southern area. 
but he is soon going to run out. This is the problem with going above, like, you know, five or six fishing ships here. A lot of players will stop at, at where hearts at seven because you're going to need fish traps sooner rather than later. And, and I always find that really complicated to get the timings down with fish traps. It feels like more often than not, I've just got fishing ships that with nothing to do for most of early castle age. That's why you need to play more uh, BF, man. <laughs> I, I, I can think of I can think of a couple counts of reasons why I don't need more Black Forest in my <laughs> life. <laughs> uh, well, Tato's actually running into the same uh, issue. He even has more fishing ships there, I think, than his opponent. Yep. And his Japanese are going to run out of fish even faster. But Tato is making that important switch over into the fish traps. And he's also got gill nets to further improve his Japanese fish. Yeah, really interesting, too, how Tato is not going for the crossbow upgrade. And, oh, there's a hole and Hart's going to get through. And Hart needed something. He, is, he hadn't killed much Ika from Tato. And this is what you want with those knights. Kill a couple villagers. Be able to run away before Ballistics comes in as well. And this is this is messy stuff for Tato right now. Hart's done a really nice job this game. Finally getting some control. Getting some counter damage in. It felt like the previous two games he was never able to do that. So a nice find. And what I appreciate from Hart this game is even when things started going, you know, quite poorly for him early on with Tato getting those amazing demo hits, he's not panicking. Yeah. And it's something that's always a little bit of a question mark with Hart, especially, you know, these days in tournaments. Um, but yeah, no, he's he's playing quite calm and collected. He's defending everything at the front. He's getting another town center. Persians don't need to be on as many TCs as quickly as their opponent. And yeah, he's still developing towards Knights and Scorpions. So not really a whole lot to complain about for Hart. Yeah, I agree. Cav Archer number isn't that high for Tato. Tato is going to attack Scorpions with Spears, which is just pretty much to give his himself time to get away with the Archers. And you got to think about Tato's military count right now. I know that it says that he's got more, but he's got, uh, well, the Spears are now dead. The Archers are, well, Archers. And then he has five Fire Galleys in that pond on the western side. So he could fish there, obviously, but he hasn't done so yet. And just the military in general is actually a lot better for heart than I think the score and the stats suggest right now. Yeah, whenever you're introducing water to a map, the scores can be quite misleading. Uh, as you know, having an army of 20 fire ships doesn't matter if they're just kind of stuck in the corner of the map. Yeah. Still, Tato is keeping pace with his opponent. And of course, the thing with Japanese here is that you are developing towards a very strong long uh, long term army with these cav archers. Scorpions can help, but especially as the Knights don't have plus two defense, they will just get uh, gunned down there by the uh, Cav Archers. Yeah, Tato might need some Knights or Siege of his own here. Tato is really heavy on stone. I think he sees these forward golds from Heart, and, well, the forward golds and stone of, you know, his own base here. And I think he, he really wants a forward castle down for that reason. But it is definitely a timing, at least with this many bills on stone, which is unique. You're usually seeing the third town center come up, then you're seeing 10 villagers on the stone later on. So Tato wants this sooner rather than later. And Tato wants to kill these scorpions. And he's trying to dodge them. Hart has ventured out so far here. And he's going to lose oh, but these... look, more scorpions. And oh! This man is not messing around. <laughs> yeah, actually not bad. I mean, a couple more volleys on these cav archers. And the cav archers will start to go down. And Tato knows it. So Tato's going to drop a TC. Nice job there from Hart. Yeah, I mean, the thing with scorpions is that it looks like they're not doing anything and not doing anything, and then everything dies all at once because of that pass-through damage. Yeah. Now, it looks like hard... Okay, he sees the town center, and those bills are they're all lined. lined up, so... Uh -huh. I mean, it feels like Tato's got just enough yeah. resistance. Nice shot there. Just enough army here. And the TC's close enough to going up where he has to back away. Tato, again, has to deal with more scorpions. Hart saw the previous game from Tato and said, good idea, let me try that. But uh, now we're going to see a Siege Workshop from Tato, and as long as it goes up, he can make a Manganel. But Hart, yet again, has not made it easy for Tato, and the res collected is dead even right now, actually. The closest game so far of the series. Yeah, and again, it's just, it's really nice to see from Hart in particular, just able to keep on going. I mean, it's a best of seven, it's a long series, you drop two games, it's certainly not ideal, but it's not something you can't come back from. We've got a Maganel coming in as well. A lot of those Cav Archers are quite low in HP as we are going towards the third TC of Heart. Very nice reaction time, though, from Tato. Yeah, I thought Tato maybe wouldn't notice there, but he not only notices and splits away from it, but then he takes out the Siege. Talk about making it look easy there for Tato. And now he just runs away. I believe he has Husbandry right now. That, that could explain the speed difference. Yes, he and he's using that speed difference 
pretty effectively. And now I'm a little bit more concerned for her heart. Oh, God. Tato can't split away from that one. Dang, man. Scorpions. Oh, we got some Matrix levels. Dodge this. <laughs> I mean, second time in this series, we've seen Scorpions do really well. So I, I don't hate it, but it's never a unit like that you could just make on its own, right? Ideally, you need to have it combined with something. Dang. Uh, yeah, I, that, that's always the thing with Scorpions, is they are not very useful on their own. Cav Archers, I mean, a fantastic spling. They're from Tattoo, but the second Mangonel is perhaps not something anticipated. The peasants are uprising. <laughs> what is happening, oh, Tattoo? I mean, he didn't hesitate before, and so maybe this time he should have, because <laughs> he just ran yeah. right into so much siege, and there's still Scorpions around, so I'm really concerned that Tattoo's going to run in, into even more shots here. My goodness. This has been Tato getting destroyed by Siege Simulator. And yet again, more Seriously? scorpions. My goodness. I mean, the mass Siege play with Persians is not something we see every day. But you know what? Tato has been reluctant to make a ton of knights. He's now going pikemen plus cav archer. So if you're leaning more into that Siege for heart, it makes absolute sense. Tato doesn't have uh, that many mangonels, just has one. And he doesn't have monks with redemption or his own knights, so not really a whole lot to counter them. Look at the outpost from Hart. Okay, so this is we're gonna have a big moment. Both players are gonna build a castle here. Hart yeah. might be a little hesitant to build it near the siege workshop, so I could see him building it to the right. But like, there's so much gold exposed on the front for both of them. A castle in this area can make or break the game, and I think Tato's gonna try and do it too. So it could happen at the same time. Which actually means the the mangonels become the most important thing, right? Because they need to. They, if you lose your mangonels, you are likely going to lose the position. Oh yeah, man! Yeah, and I, I love the outposts for that very reason. The rush distance is so short, and if your opponent just commits with a ton of villagers to building a castle, then there's very little you can do to stop it if you're not in position. So just try to make sure you are in position in the first place. And Tato seems to be doing the exact same thing. Just really smart from both of these players. Also, Ballistic's going to be in on the Cav Archers, which is quite important as the Maganel battle's now starting up. Yeah, and this is this is the composition that we talked about can be a problem for the Persians. The, the pikemen for the Japanese with the Cav Archers. It's Usually it can just be one of them, but it's both here. As Tato loses his siege, but takes out all of Hearts. And he takes that as an invitation to drop a castle. Hart has his scorpions here, though. Hart's going to drop his own castle. And he knows this could be a problem. He's got to place this first. He's oh. not building it. Tato isn't either yet, because the Cav Archer's on the foundation. And there it goes. Oh, but there's a Manganel, but the knight is right there, and that's all you need is just that one knight. And now I would imagine both castles are going to go up, but this is just so much of an uglier position for Hart as he just doesn't have that more long-term sustainability with his army composition that Tato does. Yeah, exactly. And and think about the gold position now. He was he TC'd this gold. Tato's castle is on a TC, and it is on a gold, and of course the opponent's castle, which is going to kill Vils now. And if Hart's Castle goes up, which it will, it doesn't deny anything from Tato. So Tato can happily shift around to the other areas. The Scorpions weren't able to do enough in the long run. And Hart just needed more sustainable army. Now, he did get some kills with some knights in the back of Tato's base on the gold. It looks like Tato sees that or will deal with that. And Tato's going to drop another castle, which is going to lead to then him stealing all that stone, most likely. This is going to be so awkward for Hart to maneuver through. Yeah, that Cav Archer Pikeman already composition is really tough to stop, especially for a sieve like Persians. Tato is a little bit late on getting those eco upgrades, just now getting Bowsaw. And to his credit, Hart is on his way up to Imperial Age, and Tato nowhere near it. Yeah, so you have you have two choices in these instances. Choice one is stay in Castle Age, go Petards, Rams, everything you can do to take out that castle, because this is going to come down the Trebs. Option two is you don't produce anything, and you click up to Imp, and then you figure out what you want to produce from there. So clearly they've chosen different options here. I, I prefer Hart's choice. I think that he already is struggling, or, or sorry, I think what Hart is doing for him is the correct play here because he is in a really awkward spot already with army. So I don't think staying in Castle Age is going to change that. And then for Tato, he already has good army control. So I could see why he'd want to go as crazy as he is. But you need eight Petards to take out a full HP castle. And he has a four... And then he's going to have the rams here. So we'll see if Tato can take this, this castle out. If he does not, Art's going to have two of them and the ability to make traps. 
Yeah, unfortunately, though, for Hart, uh, he doesn't have any gold income right now. As uh, I mean, that's the whole reason for going for this forward castle in the first place, is you were denying so many yep. resources of your opponent, garrisoning the pikemen in onto the castle, or onto the, the rams, going Look to go at... after the castle, and can shield the petards. Sorry to interrupt you, but can we appreciate that Tato recognizes there's no gold and is going to preemptively tower that two tiles just in case Hart finds it on the right? Like, uh... like the bottom of Heart's base, like near the pond. Oh, I, I didn't even see that tower. Yeah, like first. <laughs> I'm looking to see where can Heart take gold, and he hadn't scouted that. Tato knows it's there, and Tato is walling it. So he, in the moment, which we all know is so hard, can recognize this guy doesn't have gold. So I could kill him, and I need to make sure he doesn't get there. He's getting guard tower. He's bringing in the Rams, and this is before but the Petards come in. <laughs> Hearts coming sappers, so the Vils get extra damage to Rams. Which is new, right? I yeah, think they recently new. changed it so the Vils against Vils get extra damage against Rams. Heart using that new damage, but still, dude, it's villagers underneath the castle. <laughs> oh man, this is just such a weird game at this point. Uh. Chemistry coming in as well, and Heart just doesn't have an army. Tato is max pop. And that castle is unfortunately for Harkin to go down. Zero gold income, zero stone income. Now, he will have Bombard Cannons available to him in just a moment, but he just doesn't have that standing army that you really want to take down Tato. Tato's sticking to everything we know about him, right? Demos, towers, things he's always been really good with. He's going to get Yasama now, so his towers are stronger. And we have yet to see the Petards. So these rams are zooming their way in. If the Petards can make their way over here... That castle for Hart might go down. He might never get a treb, honestly. Uh, it's pretty close. Uh, I mean, garrisoning the, the pikemen is also really smart because it adds so much extra damage. I mean, you're getting, what, 30 extra damage a hit with yep. the, the pikemen garrison? So that is not half bad. And that castle is just going to go down so ridiculously wow. fast. Wow, that's insane. And the petards are even on their way, but Hart will not get a treb. The treb is denied. His golds are denied. He calls the GG. And that went from zero to 100 so freaking fast. But again, Hart's playing incredible. He's so good. But then there's just Tato on the other side of him. That's the problem. What insane play there from Tato. You, you got to love watching this guy play. Absolutely. And it's just, it's so distinct, right? Tato is winning his way. He's having like these really smart timings, good unit control, doing a little bit offbeat stuff with the towers and the big demo ship hits. But at the end of the day, it's just he's has the solid mechanics behind it, and that's really just what puts him way over the top. Yep. I also love Tato's tendency in some of these games to recognize he he doesn't want that imp timing that so many players shoot for, right? Like Tato mm -hmm. here is getting armor for knights. He knew if, if Hart had any chance, Hart was going to be limited on resources and probably going skirms and a couple traps. He said Castle Age knights can deal with that. Who wants to go Castle Age knights? with Japanese. Not too many people. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Batards, the Rams, the Castle Drops, I mean, man, I thought Hart had a really good game there. The Scorpions found some good hits, but again, it was it was consistent army. That was the problem for Hart. He never really had over 10 knights this game. It was, I remember a couple instances where there's three knights in Tato's Eco, they died. Three more knights in Tato's Eco, they died. There's never a big ball of knights next to his Scorpions, and I don't know if that comes back to what we said before about the Persians, where you never feel like you have the resources to make army and boom at the same time. Um, maybe it was the shortage of gold, but uh, ultimately, again, to repeat myself here, I think you just you got to look right over on the other side of things and say that Tato's just playing his best Age of Empires ever, and there's a reason he was the favorite. The map that Hart will have to go crazy mode on to have any chance here today is Islands, and we've got Hart playing as the Italians. We've got Tato playing as the Vikings. And man, like from week one to now week, I think technically three in this qualifier. I know you've been casting a lot, Orn Lu. Yep. What have you been thinking about this island's meta? What is the meta right now? Because I've seen it change. So on the one hand, you have players starting, I think, opening either with landing or with fast galleys. Like, you know, we're playing islands back in the day. Now we see a lot more fast castle. Uh, back docks either a landing or maybe fast castle, especially Vikings, you know, trying to go for the fast castle longboats, greed style. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of different ways you can play this map, to, uh, contrary to what Twitch chat always likes saying. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I that's what I felt. And I think it'll be interesting to see if the main event players and, of course, all the players who end up qualifying end up agreeing, right? Because when it comes to a meta in a qualifier, you have that mix of people not being entirely sure what's working yet combined with maybe certain things are working because one player is better than another, right? But uh, to see, have seen a Fast Castle against Fast Castle game twice, I think, this week, when the level should be more competitive, it should be closer, is uh, is pretty wild to me. And I wasn't expecting it to really go that far. But a big thing when it comes to the approach here, at least from Hart's point of view with the Italians, is the Vikings don't have as many options. They can't go for the Fire Galley, which is such a common tool on water maps. So I always feel like if you're going to go landing and make it messy against any civilization, you might want to make it messy against the Vikings. That way the Vikings don't have that easy breezy galley type build. Yeah, and you know, I, I've been thinking a lot about, you know, where you can play the various water sieves because it's been so long since we've had the pure water map in a map pool. I mean, now you just have so many more viable water sieves. Sure, yeah. Vikings, they really just want to keep the game as standard as possible. They don't like dealing with landings. They have bad monks. They don't really, you don't really want to invest into knights or anything like that. And you can't go for fire galleys, as you're saying. So you can't go for really any sort of a hybrid approach. So Vikings themselves are also bad at landing. Yeah. So that does make Vikings somewhat limited. That said, they're really good at what they do. So yeah, yeah. yeah. it's going to be an interesting one. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, Vikings are super smooth at what they do, which is why the win rate's actually been really, really good um, compared to what I thought it was going to be anyways. Um, and I, I also thought we would see Portuguese played a ton on this map. That's what everyone thought. Because remember, Hidden Cup 4 Islands, uh, Portuguese, uh, their Fatorias had way more HP. I think they were cheaper back then. They were also way less uh, civs viable on water. We've seen the Dramans introduced to water. We've seen Armenians. Bengalis, I think, will actually see in the main event on water. Um, I must be missing some here. Uh, uh, Dravidians. Dravidians is um... an obvious one. And, you know, the list probably goes on in, in some of the balance changes that happen on water, like cannon galleons, right? We're actually seeing cannon galleons utilized in fights now, whereas in the past they were useless in the fights. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been interesting for me as well. Tato uh, indicating to us he's going to go for more passive play with the dock in the north. And Hart is gone for kind of a back dock. And I did want to point out that this strip of, of sand here is very likely passable i'd be very surprised if that is actually uh like locked off in yeah. some way that should be passable terrain it does look weird but uh don't worry it's not like not a true island here for hart he should be fine <laughs> it is technically a peninsula <laughs> yeah yeah and it shouldn't be dockable uh, either to my knowledge what you but can it do might probably be, is wallet yeah it might be wallable yeah that's true you can yeah. technically like stone gate that which would be really interesting yeah i don't think that would be like bug abuse or anything like that i mean it's just kind of aoe2 maps can be weird sometimes right yeah i mean i don't know if it would benefit you but if there was one on the other side and this was like viper he would stone gate stone gate stack docks in there and go for fist boom <laughs> yeah. absolutely <laughs> Okay, so this is a fast castle war again. What in the world? I know. Well, maybe not for Tato, actually. Tato could be going for some delayed galleys. Um, there is a build that I think you can do with all sieves, which is underrated, in my opinion, against this. Which is you go double dock, uh, you make two galleys, and then you add six or so fishing ships here. So uh, yeah, we could see that. Yeah. Um... And then you go for a, sort of a semi-fast castle age. Correct. You yeah. get to like if you go, if you're going against a fast castle, which is almost certainly what Hart's doing, that can give you okay. I can put some pressure on my opponent's fishing ships, but still not be too far behind them in the castle age time. Especially maybe if you're a sieve like Vikings, who can come back on water very well in early castle age because of the longboat. It might be even just that much more viable. Yeah. Well, so um, I've I've seen it and I've talked about it, and my thinking is, you will know. So, so in Tato's position, you haven't seen Heart in Feudal yet, and it's cheaper for Italians. You know, with certainty, it's his Fast Castle for Heart. And so, if it's Fast Castle for Heart, where is he going to dock? 
He's going to dock the back. That's what everyone does. So you're never scouting the front. And then if it's fast castle for heart, you're going to eventually die to fire ships. So the two galleys are more than enough to snipe as many fish as you could possibly get. And then you go the two galleys into a couple more fish. And I think this will be a tell. It's tricky because everyone's going to be seeing this. But this build here, I think, will be a lot more common. What Tato's doing. So, but if Tato wins this game, it wins the series, makes it to the main event, Tato confirmed possibly if we see this. It's really nice build order. Yeah, I am a fan of it. It's not impossible to defend because, uh, especially for a civ like Italians who have such a smooth, fast castle, you can easily just make like one fire ship and sort of push the, the galleys away. I mean, it's only two of them. Yep. But I, I still think it's an interesting build from Tato. And it's again, we see these little differences and adaptations uh, as the metagame develops on islands in 2024. Yeah, it's, it's fun. really good. Yeah, it's been it's been really fun to to think about, and um, there's there's still some variations I think that people have not figured out just yet, which will possibly come in the main event. Now Tatu just misses the forward dock from Hart, which might actually end up helping him because he might have stayed there and lurked around for the fish. But yeah, like we said, he doesn't want to scout the front; he wants to scout the back, and he does get very fortunate here because some it could be the other side, you know. Um, he should be able to locate this dock and know there's fish here. And yep, there he goes. He sees the fish. This <laughs> is actually the dream scenario for this build order for Tato. Absolutely. It is six galley shots to kill a fishing ship, so just three volleys of two. And that fire galley is going to have a very bad day trying to chase down uh, the regular galleys. And the fishing chips are trying to uh, scatter as best they can, but still denying a bit of food income. And like I was saying, you're not that much slower to castle age at yep. this sort of build. It is interesting that Tato put so much priority on going up still because he sold the stone, right? But I like how smooth this is. You kill two fishing ships. You have eight behind this. You also get the wheelbarrow upgrade with the Vikings already. And then in Castle Age, you're soon going to get handcart for free. And this must be longboats, which again, have been really, really good for the Vikings. Longboats have lost, but they have also won and looked incredibly strong if you can get enough of them. I mean, yeah, that's the thing, is longboats are very population efficient, especially relative to the, the regular galleon line, but they are expensive, and especially on the, the gold cost, so if you invest too much of them, too much into them in the late game, you can get out cost efficiency to buy regular galleons, so it's a really tricky dynamic between do you want to invest all the way into longboats, but at the very least in the mid-game, longboats should be uh, the ruler of the seas for the Vikings. yeah. yeah. And it's just, the, the downside is, can you get by without any defense when these fire galleys are coming in? And the answer should be no. The cheap dock techs are in for the Italians. Obviously, we saw the pro of Tato's strategy. We're now going to see the con because these fires should shred all of Tato's fish. So the investment into fish, I think, did pay off. He brought in a lot of food with those fishing ships. But... He could start to lose some of them on both sides now. Great job from Hart to immediately loop around to the back, just like Tato did, to know that the fish are going to be there. And longboats will be on the way for Tato, of course. But Tato will have some fire ships to deal with. I love that Hart sent fire ships around both sides yep. just to make sure that the, the fishing ships couldn't uh, escape in one direction or the other. Of course, longboat production has begun. They do train a, a fair bit faster than the, uh, the war galley, I believe 11 seconds faster. Yep. And uh, so it's going to be pretty easy to mass the numbers that you need. But still, you're losing a lot of your fishing eco. Tato only on one TC to his opponents, too. Yeah, Tato also another dock. So so usually what happens here is the Italian player, they're, they're happy with this. All they want is they just want to snipe the opponent's fish. They know the opponent will take a lot of investment to kill their fires. And then they just plan towards imp. So the second TC and the third TC timing here from Hart, this is pretty much textbook. And this is something that I want to like, make sure that people hear because two years ago, maybe three years ago with Hart playing on a water map, he might have looked clueless. But even though the scoreline suggests that, you know, he's, well, obviously the scoreline suggests Tatch has been better than him. That doesn't mean that he doesn't know what he's doing on these maps. He's played really good, really textbook. But now it becomes difficult because you'll have those three town centers you're still waiting for Imp, basically. And with this very narrow island, I could see Hart having a really tough time dealing with uh, Longboat Fire. 
that is a transport ship here for Tato. It looks like he's going to go for the the relics in the middle very early on. Ooh. Well, think about it, though. The It is likely that Fast Fire and Early Imp will push Tato back at some point. And the idea behind these relics being here is to give the player who has more map control or water control um, some some level of advantage. So it's very interesting to see him do it this early. This might be the earliest we've seen someone go for relics, but this is Tato, and I can't disagree with how he sees the game. The only uh, more amazing long-term planning is if you rush out the farm upgrades, because that's when you know there are true islands <laughs> on the sewer. <laughs> oh, man, when Ganji didn't disable auto-farm yesterday, I was I felt so bad. Yeah, I, was, I mean, I, I felt, I felt not game. really bad for him. I think that's a lesson learned. I think he should have known yeah, that. Yeah. Look how fast this TC goes down! Yeah, man. Oh. Longboats are good. <laughs> oh, man. They're re... I mean, I, I kind of forgot. I thought the villagers can be ranged. But the TCs are just melting. Hart needs something more on water right now. This could get bad. He's going to be on a one town center. If he doesn't defend from this. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the strength of going for a longboat slash war galleys. You can just bombard the shoreline so much more effectively. It's now really awkward for Hart. Now, Tato is only on 39 bills to 57 right now, so that is a very sizable difference. Yeah. But he has the navy. He has the map control, and that is going to be so impactful as the game goes on. Hart is just going to try and expand over to the side again, where I'm, I'm fairly certain he can still be ranged by longboats. Oh, man, and then you've got, like... You're staring down at three wins from Tato. Like, oh, it must feel so rough right now to be hard. <laughs> oh, so painful. This is why people may be going Fast Castle, and then maybe this leads into Fast Castle Caravel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Although I did, I was thinking uh, the Thirasadai would be really good against longboats because they are, you know, so good against galleys. I did a, a bunch of testing yesterday. Okay. Apparently they're awful against uh, longboats. The extra little bit of damage that longboats do, like, they easily win. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking, I think that ship should be combined with Galleon. And then maybe, I don't know if that helps. Yeah, but no idea. I think because you can only make that ship in Imp, you need to be making Galleons anyways. But, yeah. But, I mean, Hart needs, Hart wants to, wanted an easy 3TC boom to click up, drop a castle, go fast fire. He is completely surrounded, and he has been unfortunate with the shape of his island as well, right? Yeah. Because, like, Tata's island would... If Hart had that, the galleons wouldn't... Uh, these uh, longboats, rather, wouldn't be able to range as much. But Hart, like, really in a tough position, both because of the strategy from Tato and the shape of his island right now. But you also have to possibly adapt your strategy to the given map, right? If yep. you... Yep. Your entire strategy is just contingent 100%. on... My opponent can't range me when I'm comfy on my island, and your island is uh, rather elongated. Like, maybe you have to try and think about some doing something different. It's not like Italians can only do this. They're yeah, very flexible. Exactly. Italians have the galley option. Italian, Yeah, there's a lot of different things Italians can do. Res Collected is higher for Tato, which is crazy considering he is behind by so many villagers. And he already... Is, he's going to have six relics. Actually, there's nothing to stop Tato from getting maybe all of them. Because he can just transport over to, to Hart's Island next. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing stopping him. Both of the relics are actually far forward, and Tato has the vision of both of them. Yeah. Hart is trying to work, I think, towards a castle and an Imperial Age. He doesn't have either of the buildings he needs to click up. Uh, sorry, he's building them over towards the east of his island. So, yeah. I mean, he's kind of getting there. But, I mean, there's so much, <laughs> so many units you need to uh, make to start climbing back here on the water. Yeah. Now, I think... I think he still has a shot if he can get a castle up near this gold, which also, again, he doesn't need it right now. But, I mean, it, the more I look at this, I just the more bad I feel for Hart. I mean, <laughs> when you've got 36 longbows surrounding you, it's always going to be bad. But this is especially bad with, like, that gold position, for example. But he needs to get a castle up there. And then once the castle's up, he's able to drop more docks. That's the idea. But you can't have the castle too far away from the shoreline because then the docks can be ranged. And you can't have the castle too close to the shoreline because then your castle won't go up. So, again, best of luck to Hart right now as Tato's about to get relic number five and six. And Tato's clicked up at a very similar time behind this somehow. Yeah, that's crazy. This just comes down to efficiency, right? I mean, despite having more villagers, the efficiency between the two players has actually been somewhat comparable. Yeah. And that comes down to uh, 
Hearts Island looking like uh, Britain there, circa 900 CE. 38 <laughs> longboats right now. 38. This is crazy. Like, you shouldn't be able to imp with this, right? Like, this doesn't feel natural. And okay, there goes Hart. There goes Hart. He's going to try and build a castle in the back. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is that oh, the no. season? Uh, wasn't uh, Dowd a direct invite to the tournament? Yeah, he's invited, all right. And, uh, well, he's going to be there. Oh. And Hart will not just yet. Hart drops the GG. And on islands, look at the, the total amount of ships created. Just eight fire ships for Hart and 42 ships for Tato there. Now, obviously, we knew the approach. I, I kind of explained it. It has become quite common with the Italians to actually give up water control. And the water control was needed more so in this game than ever. But Tato wins 4-0. The good news for Hart, I, I know it could be easy to, to let this get to your head a little bit, but there's a second chance qualifier for him tomorrow. And Hart is going to move into uh, playing the... Well, I actually forget at this point. Uh, we'll, we'll have to pull that up, who's going to play the, the loser of. But every player who plays in these best of seven deciders, if they lose, they move into another one uh, as the backup qualifier. So I... I think Hart... It's the loser of Sebastian Babarum. Loser of Sebastian Babarum. Well, I think Hart will be the favorite in that series. Um, and Tato was always going to be the favorite here, which he showed why today for anyone who maybe hadn't seen him play in this qualifier or seen him play recently. He is, he is truly one of, the, one of the greats of the game right now. And so um, while the 4-0 hurts, I think Tato winning was expected today, Ornu.